Welcome to the Road to 5G, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, opportunities for high-frequency PCB materials in the emerging 5G market. Hi and welcome. I'm Art Aguayo from Rogers Corporation, and I'm here to talk to you about 5G and the way in which Rogers' 50 years of material knowledge is here to help designers meet the technology needs of this upcoming technology. In this presentation, we will initially talk about market drivers for 5G. Why do we need to go beyond 4G and LTE? And what is 5G? And then have a brief discussion on high frequency materials, PCB material choices for 5G applications. Let's start with the drivers for 5G. In essence, the demand for data is explosive. And this is what's causing the need for upgrades in the networks. Following Cisco's VNI report, over the years we see how mobile data has been growing. The most recent report from February of this year shows projections 7x that of 2016 toward 2021, with video demand growing at the center of this explosion. To put this in perspective, we need to see the growth in data demand alone between 2020 and 2021 is 2x that of all the mobile data that we are using in 2016. In addition to the growth of data, we also see the device connections increasing. 4G is in, in continue to increase, 3G does not let off, and we're starting to beginning to see uh, the IoT, and that through the LPWA, the uh, low power wide area access devices. The report not only gives us insight as to the growth in the number of traditional device connections, like smartphones for 4G, but also begins to forecast the growth in this area of LPWA, the low power wide area devices, which is a subset of the IoT world, the Internet of Things which based on statements from major network OEMs, are believed to grow into the tens of billions in 2025 to 2030 timeframe. 4G connections will triple by 2021. So what can we take away from this? Is that the growth in data and the growth in devices will require networks to continue to expand. And to do so, a new technology to meet all these needs will be needed. And that technology is 5G. So what is 5G? Well, 5G some will define is basically to have data all the time at the rates that we need everywhere we go. So that it gives the illusion of infinite access to data. That is what some define as 5G. IMT 2020 vision of 5G is shown here. We can see how network capabilities need to be enhanced and how that benefits the application sectors. Enhanced mobile broadband will benefit from improved data rates, spectrum efficiencies and mobility to deliver services like multi-gigabit fixed broadband to the home or enhance augmented reality services to mobile users. Massive machine type communications will benefit from improved connection densities and network energy efficiencies for IoT application while ultra reliable communications will seek low latency and peak data rate improvements. What can say that 5G is really three networks combined? They will be rolling out in different times because of the applications and the technology needed to develop these networks. So today we're starting to see pre-5G technology rolling out in some parts of the world. We're starting to see frequency bands that are being deployed and expanded so that we can start seeing the benefits of that. South Korea and Japan are moving fast to have these benefits. Ready for the Olympics in 2018 in the winter for Korea and 2020 for the Summer Olympics in Japan. In North America, we've seen in the news that some of the carriers are going forward in 2017 and 2018 with early deployments of multi-gigabit fixed broadband services to the home at millimeter band frequencies like 28 gigahertz. And in China, we see carriers deploying sub-6 gigahertz technology like massive MIMO antennas. All this technology to provide the fully connected city, the 5G smart city, autonomous driving vehicles, enhanced sporting events experiences, remote medical services including surgery, advances in robotics for industry and drones delivering packages all these will form part of our future, to name a few. To do this, the 5G network will deploy new types of technologies at frequencies below 6 gigahertz and all the way to 70 and 90 and beyond. Rogers' vast knowledge in high frequency materials and their electrical characterizations make Rogers an ideal partner in developing new material solutions for 5G. So what does this mean from a materials perspective when one is considering what materials from the vast selection to go on 5G? Move towards higher frequency bands to support mobile and fixed 5G wireless millimeter frequency bands will be part of 5G. 
28 to 40 gigahertz range has seen much research and development, while bands beyond 77 gigahertz show much promise due to the available spectrum. Currently thin RO3003 materials meet electrical needs, in particular with rolled copper to reduce conductor losses. This material today is being used in 77 gigahertz automotive radar sensors. Lowering conductor losses of woven glass alternatives like CLT-AT materials through smooth copper could provide alternatives to a lower cost for fabrication. The glass weave in the dielectric makes processing easier for circuit board and assembly facilities. The RO4000 material with low pro technology offers the best option of reduction and insertion loss while maintaining cost of ownership low. Not as low as uh, low loss PTFE materials, cost advantages makes this material technology the best initial first approach at frequency bands below 40 gigahertz. A new technology that we deployed in 5G is going to be massive MIMO. This will require PCB materials that can be processed and worked in multi-layer construction in a cost-effective manner. We recommend that work below 6 gigahertz be supported with RO4350B and RO 4835 potentially RO4730 G3 with a dielectric constant of 3. Work at 30 gigahertz will be better supported with RO4000 low pro materials. While at 77 gigahertz, it is best suited for the RO3003 and CLT-AT materials. However, there is interest to evaluate lowest loss materials like RT-Duroid 5880 and Diclide 880, as well as the RT-Duroid 5880 LZ. A note to remember, RT-Duroid 5880 and Diclide 880 are not recommended for multi-layer technology due to the high Z-axis expansion, but RT-Duroid 5880 LZ can be used in this manner. IoT applications are quite broad, much will be supported with FR4, but unique opportunities for low-loss FR4 type materials will exist. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle applications will be antenna-intensive, requiring PCB dielectric antennas and shaped low-loss dielectrics. Also, we see possible antenna materials in high reliability sectors like industrial robotics, requiring high data rates. In general, Roger's extensive team of application and sales development engineers, R&D engineers, and market development managers are well-suited in the knowledge and capability to support your material needs in the development of 5G technology. This concludes this segment of the Road to 5G. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.